Hey guys, Matthew here. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys an updated guide on my Seismic Trapper. So a lot of people have been asking me a few things. First off, what are we going to do once they nerf Eternal Blessing, which we know is going to happen in the upcoming patch? And another question that I've had a ton is, how do I get more damage? How do I push this build? I'm having a ton of fun with it, but I want to put more currency into it. So today's video, I'm going to be addressing all that. Now, before anything else, I do want to say that I'm going to be taking it for granted today that you guys have either... Or you're either playing this build or you've seen my leak starter version of it uh, so basically i'm not going to go into super details or anything i'm just going to focus on what's changed uh and uh basically what i'm doing or what we're going to be doing to fix the problems and of course what i'm doing in terms of end game options okay so we're going to go very quickly over the gear we are still rocking cold iron points they are by far our best in slot when it comes to uh physical damage right Devouring Diadem is, of course, our best in slot helmet. It gives us Eldritch Battery. Now, if you don't know what Eldritch Battery does, is basically it makes your energy shield protect your mana instead of your life, which means you could sit inside of a degen and it won't degen your energy shield. Uh, you could get hit and it won't re remove your energy shield, right? What it does also is it makes it so your skills actually cost uh, uh, energy shield instead of mana. So you can see I can spam my seismic traps and my energy shield is just going to keep going up, so I can literally never run out of energy shield. It's pretty much physically impossible for me to run out of energy shield, which allows me to basically take all of my mana and reserve it with different auras. And then, of course, my life pool is uh, is going to be more available because I'm not using life tap. Uh, and life tap is a fairly weak support anyways. So Devouring Diadem is a great upgrade to the build. Your enchant of choice is Seismic Trap releases one additional wave. If you don't know what that does, is it creates one more of the small waves. So instead of having five, you have six, right? Which is technically like 18% more damage. Uh, so it's huge. Definitely the best enchant you could have for this build. Okay, next, uh, our Skin of the Lords or Skin of the Loyal. A lot of people have been asking me about that. The best in slot would be a plus four Skin of the Loyal. However, Skin of the Lords is a very good budget option. You can get one for like an X or so. Um, but a lot of people have been asking me about the notables on it. So here's what I would recommend. Uh, open up your POB, right? And then essentially when you're looking to buy a Skin of the Lords and you can look at the notable, right? Let's say, for example, mine says point blank and then just search on your tree, like point blank, and look at what it does, right? And you don't really need to know all the different mechanics. You just kind of need to look at the node. And as you can see, for me, it says nothing, right? And the reason for that is because it doesn't affect my build. Another answer, uh, another one would be, for example, Crimson Dance. Yeah, see, see, it doesn't say anything. It just says allocating its nodes and the nodes leading up to you will give you a bunch of strength. But that's because it's accounting for all the travel nodes. So it does nothing, right? So Crimson Dance would be fine. Now, for example, if we look at Elemental Overload, see how it says minus 71% damage? Yeah, that's really bad. We don't want that. Minus 71% damage is a no-go. Uh, so we are absolutely not going to be uh, using that. Uh, so that's how you want to figure it out. It's very simple. The gloves, we are using Unerv on hit. Now, I have tested this in PvP with both Seismic and with Exsanguinate. It does work, so you don't have to worry about it. It's, uh, you know, 10% more damage on your build. Uh, it is also the lowest tier, uh, so you could easily buy a pair of gloves, which already has life resistances and whatnot, and then just use the lowest of the Eldritch Currencies. Uh, Spell Suppress is also the lowest tier here, uh, paired with a tier 1 for a total of 29, and as you can see, uh, I'm 1% overcapped on, me, on my Spell Suppression. Actually, you can't see. Uh, I'm 1% overcapped on my Spell Suppression, uh, so you really will need a T1 Spell Suppression roll on your gloves alongside the lowest possible tier of Eldritch, which is pretty good. Um, now, Deerstalkers versus Aziri Step is a question I get all the time. I personally went with Deerstalkers, and the reason for that is because uh, it allows me to run these gloves with Unnerved, right? If I had the uh, the Aziri Step, I would not be able to do this with my gloves. I would have to use gloves with, like, Trap and Mind Damage or Trap Support or whatever, like Shaper Gloves. Therefore, I would lose the Unnerved. It would be much harder to get my Spell Suppression up on the build uh, because this is 29 Spell Suppression. Azir Step don't even give you 29% on a perfect pair. Uh, so, yeah, this is why I went with this uh, and Deer Stalkers. But it really is personal preference. Now, this is one of the big changes. We are changing the Amulet and we are also changing the Anoint. So our new amulet of choice, which is going to allow us to run all the auras that I that, that we're going to be running is Ashes of Stars. It comes with a, a reservation efficiency. Now, you're probably going to need to divine it quite well, depending on the rest of your build. Uh, but you'll see that, for example, I have 12 mana left, right, with a perfect roll. Uh, but if I go down uh, any more than about a 15% roll, I will not be able to cast my stuff. 
Uh, so you want to make sure that you're probably going to be getting a decent roll here, something like, you know, 17, 18, whatever. As long as you have at least one mana or one mana unreserved or even zero technically, it's fine, right? Because we are using ES to cast. We don't care about how much mana we have. Okay, now our end game rings are circle of guilts and the the ones that we want are buff effect and physical damage while affected by Herald of Purity. As you can see, these rings give me about 14% damage each. It's pretty ridiculous. It's about a third of the damage on our build, or a fourth of the damage on our build uh, coming for these two rings. Uh, so they are very, very good rings. Highly recommend. However, capping out your resistances is going to be a little bit more complicated with that. Okay, so Stygian Vise, life resistance, very generic stuff. And of course, we're going trap, in mind th or trap throwing speed on our suffix, which is a craft. Uh, so... Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing for, uh, going for. However, if your build needs more strength, for example, like mine, I would probably change that to just a high strength roll or another resistance roll. It kind of depends on where you're at on the build. Uh, uh, jewel is just going to be life and resistance on our on our jewel in our belt. The flask have stayed the exact same. You can just look at that. It's basically just defensive flask, right? We have armor, we have evasion, we have uh, effective curses and uh, reduced effective curses, I should say, and then you know the diamond armor evasion. Quicksilver. Very, very simple stuff. Okay, now we are going for uh, a couple things that has changed here in the cluster setup. Uh, the large cluster has stayed the same. Any three notables will do. However, the strongest notable by far is Force Multiplier. This gives us 5% chance to deal double damage, which is essentially 5% more damage. And of course, physical damage as well. For a total of 7.6% more damage in a single notable. This thing is nuts. And another thing that you'll see has changed a lot is the medium cluster. I'm going with a single notable called Arcane Pyronetics or pyrotechnics and the reason for that is because we want arcane surge arcane surge is again 10 percent more damage right but the thing is it's impossible to get arcane surge with eldritch battery because we never spend mana right we used to have arcane surge linked with flame dash we can't do that anymore uh, because we are never spending any mana therefore what we go with is arcane pyrotechnics and this is going to give us arcane surge all the time uh, and it's a you know very very cheap cluster and it's going to allow us to also get an extra jewel socket which is not bad all right, the Watcher's Eye of choice uh, was very simple for me. It's chance to deal double damage while using Pride. It's just, you know, 11% more damage on your build. It's just it's a huge multiplier, and uh, it's going to do a lot of work for you. Okay, now let's talk about Super Endgame, Forbidden Flames and Forbidden Flesh. Now, these are the two new jewels. There's really only one really good option, and it is Ambush and Assassinate. However, I've heard that these jewels are crazy expensive right now, so I would recommend probably just skipping out on them, unless you are willing, unless you're like playing this build and you really want to push the damage and you really want to push it to, you know, as high as you possibly can. This is going to be what you want. 15% uh, more damage with enemy uh, when enemies are on low life, which means as soon as they reach 50% HP, you're going to be doing 15% 50, more damage. And it also gives you Calling Strike, which is basically 10% more damage as well. So that's a 25% more damage increase on your build, on top of the 100% uh, more crit chance when enemies are on low life as well. Now, we're actually not going to utilize the 100% more critical strike chance that on enemies that are on life or full life and low life. And the reason for that is because the enemy is only on full life for a single hit, and after that they're no longer on full life. And between the 100% life and the 50% life, that full that first half of the amount of HP that they have, if you're just betting on the 100% more crit chance to cap out your crits, uh, well, you're going to have some issues, right? Uh, you're going to deal very little damage because we are a, a build which heavily relies on critting uh, to do a lot of damage. So we are definitely not going to be really uh, building our character around that. I tried and it felt really bad uh, on the physical side of things. Okay, so if you can't afford these jewels anyways, or if they don't exist, which is also going to be possibly a problem, I would recommend just going with, with jewels with life, resistances, crit multi, and you know trap throwing speed, very generic stuff, which is going to allow you an easier time capping out your resistances, more tankiness, you can get upwards of like 4,000 life or close to on your build. And of course, uh, you know, for example, I'm having a bit of a strength issue right now. Uh, and the reason for that is because I had to change my amulet to Ashes of Stars. So I would I would possibly, uh, you know, grab the strength node. Or for example, I could grab strength on my gloves. I could grab strength on my belt instead. Or, you know, on these jewels. So there's a lot of things that you can do to fix the strength issue. I'll leave that up to you. It really depends on your build. Okay, now quickly going over the skill gems. We're still rocking uh, Flame Dash. Uh, now no longer linked with Arcane Surge again. Assassin's Mark for, uh, of course, our curse uh, of choice. It gives us ridiculous amounts of damage, 33% more damage from this. Uh, we are self-applying it, however. Uh, next, we are running a Bear Trap. Again, just a more multiplier to your damage, about 20% more damage. You've got to aim it properly, though. 
Uh, and then Whirling Blaze and Faster Attacks is my personal skill, uh, movement skill of choice. Now, this is alternative to my uh, Flame Dash. Or not alternative, but on top of it, because Flame Dash just charges. So in maps, you know, you're going to be really slow with Flame Dash. Whirling Blaze is going to help with that. Dodging some mechanics from bosses like Slams, for example, from Shaper can also be quite good if you run out of Flame Dash charges. So I, I like having Whirling Blades in this setup. Okay, another question I've had a ton of people ask me is the gem setup, right? Uh, so I run tr triple blue. And it's not necessarily because it's the best. It's just because these are the colors on my skin of the lords. Um, so you'll see that I run conch effect. Again, this is personal preference. It's not necessarily the best gem. It does uh, make it so you have less explosions. This is probably going to be five now, by the way, because we are removing our, our uh, duration anoint. Um, the mandatory gems are seismic trap, brutality, increased critical strikes, and advanced traps. Okay. The rest, the other three links can be conch effect, trap and mind damage, increased critical damage, hyperthermia, even cruelty. Now, cruelty is definitely a little bit worse than the other ones, but those are your options there. Uh, next, on the ore side of things, we're going to be rocking a helmet with uh, determination, grace, and pride, and enlightened level 4. Now, this is where things can get real expensive because enlightened level 4s are really expensive right now. So what I would recommend doing if you don't have the money for an enlightened level 4 uh, right, so let's just say I don't have that amount of currency, so I cannot run Enlightened Level 4, is that we are going to drop Defiance Banner, and then we're going to take Skitterbots, and we're going to put it on the helmet, and uh, we are probably going to have to uh, also get the rings with some uh, reservation on our, uh, uh, sorry, on Herald of Purity. As you can see, this is going to fix our problem. So the the advantage here is this is much cheaper, right? The rings with reservation and physical damage or buff effect, both are about the same, uh, are going to, uh, these are going to be about 3% less damage because each of the physical damage while affected and the purity buff effect are roughly about 4, 3, 4% damage each. Uh, so by simply dropping one of them, we're going to be dropping a little bit of damage, but this is going to make it so we do not need Enlighten at all. We are also going to be dropping a little bit of survivability via Defiance Banner, but again, at the cost of, you know, instead of Enlighten level 4, which is currently going for 15, 16, you know, plus Exalts. Uh, so I'll have two POBs in the description of the video. One is going to be with Enlighten for the people who, you know, have more currency, and one of them is going to be without Enlighten, without Forbidden Flame, uh, without Forbidden Flesh, for the people who want to maybe invest like 20x into the build, but don't want to invest, you know, 50x into the build uh, otherwise molten shell is still our go-to because of the amount of armor that we have especially with flasks up we have quite a bit of armor uh defines banner or losing defines banner does hurt our survivability but not a ton uh and herald of purity damage is you know pretty considerable with the rings as you can see 36 percent more damage it's a lot uh then of course in our boots we're gonna rock our exsanguinate setup this could also be gloves if you're going with uh, it's your steps instead but yeah this is basically the changes that we're going to need to do in order to be able to run all of our auras with the upcoming uh nerf to eternal blessing and of course also how to push the build to the next level now for those wondering this is the setup that i've been running uh in order to do feared carries with four different people in my party uh you know uh and this is you know four man or five man cortexes five man feared five man uber zeris five man uber elders five man mavens and it's been honestly quite uh, quite easy. Definitely had some issues depending on some mods. You know, double, triple tanks can become pretty crazy uh, with that amount of HP. But overall, it's pulled through and it's definitely the league starter that I think I've had the most success with uh, in terms of clearing content. It's been an absolute blast to play. So I hope you guys have also been enjoying it a whole lot. Anyways, before I go, as always, do want to say a huge thank you to my supporters. So Jacob, Alex, Max, Hamad, Rescoral, Brandon, welcome back. Thomas, Nake, the Great Master, Alex, the other Alex, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, Gary Fish, Nail, the Arsonist, and Bizen, as well as, of course, anybody else who's supported me in the past, anyone else who was just remain anonymous. I know this has not been updated yet. I'm sorry about that. So for the people missing, there's been a lot of influx of new patrons, and I really, really appreciate the support. Um, so hopefully you guys have a good one, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.